Well, I, uh, I hate to break it to you guys, but my beagle is here. He's basically attached at my hip now because, unfortunately, our basset hound passed away a few weeks ago. So, if you hear obnoxious snoring, it is him. I apologize. <laughs> he is a noisy guy. I wanted to tell you guys a story, do a story time for this lovely January 31st and let you in on a part of my life that I don't really talk about with anyone. I don't really um, say much because most people become very uncomfortable when you bring up certain topics of conversation, you know? So I would like to discuss how I was diagnosed with leukemia. This is a topic that might be sensitive. Uh, if you have someone in your family that has cancer or had someone in your family has cancer or you know whatever, if someone passed away from cancer in your family, I understand if you don't want to watch this. But if you do want to stay and, and hear that story, I will tell it to you. When I was nine years old, I was a happy child. I was overweight, I was funny, I was a bit of a mess, but I was happy, I was content, I was your typical nine-year-old. I was a competition cheerleader as well as a gymnast, and I was very good at both things, more so the gymnast side than the competition cheerleading side. I loved being able to flip around and do all that fun stuff. But one day in November, late November I would say, I was in school and I was in gym class and I was thirsty, obviously, if you're running around in gym class. P.S. Disclaimer, I hated gym class, <laughs> but I went outside with one of my friends at the time to get a sip of water and on my way there I slipped. This was kind of weird for me, it was kind of off because I was very good on my feet, I very rarely fell and I didn't fall that much so I shouldn't have been in the pain that I was in. I got myself off the ground and noticed my ribs were really hurting me and I, I didn't know why. I mean, why would your ribs be hurting you? That's kind of weird. I went back into the gymnasium and I was crying and I told my gym teacher I need to go to the nurse. I'm in a lot of pain. I don't know what I did. Can you please let me go to the nurse? And he said no. Now this gym teacher comes into contacts later in the story. He called the nurse eventually because I was refusing to get off the bleachers because I was in so much pain. And she comes in, she gets me a wheelchair, she brings me to the nurse's office. I don't really remember what happened after that, honestly. So fast forward a couple of weeks, I'm like in my mom's bathroom. My chocolate lab at the time is sitting behind me, which is very weird. My chocolate lab was super aware of everyone. He would never put any of us in any sort of danger. I stepped back and I fell. I was in so much pain that I couldn't breathe. My dog got up and was sniffing me and it was just, it was kind of weird. Fast forward to December and I was at one of my competition cheerleading, sorry, practices. <laughs> We were stunting. If you know what stunting is, it's basically you hold the flyer up in the air, you bring them up, you bring them down, and it was all good and dandy. Although I was, because I was the biggest girl on the team probably, I had to take on the brunt of the weight of our flyer. So I was in excruciating pain when we brought her up. I heard these three distinct cracks in my back. I wasn't really sure what they were. 
and we brought her down and I caught her and I fell to the ground sobbing uncontrollably just in so much freaking pain I can't I can't even explain to you how much pain I was in and uh, you know time goes on everyone goes home I'm still on the gym mat unable to move or breathe or talk or anything and eventually my dad comes upstairs and brings me home and I take a bath and I still don't feel well in the morning so my mom brings me to the chiropractor thinking maybe I pulled a muscle or something like that and I continued to go to the chiropractor for several weeks until Christmas when I fell down the staircase in 2004 which again was very unlike me I was a very coordinated child I couldn't breathe and actually this was the first time as well with the falling I had a super high fever. At this point, I stopped going to school as much. My parents had trouble believing me for a while that I was in as much pain as I was in and couldn't use my backpack or anything because I was a child that hated school and I still don't really like school as an adult, which I hold nothing against them because like my God, I would think the same thing. Christmas happened, I stayed on the couch the whole day and then January rolled around and I completely stopped walking because it hurt my legs, it hurt my back so much that I couldn't breathe. And I felt like my lungs and my whole body was just being scrunched like this. I don't really know how else to explain it. So I went to the orthopedic surgeon eventually because at the chiropractor the last time I was there I couldn't actually stand up from the bench. I was in so much pain. So I went to an orthopedic surgeon and he looked at my parents and he looked at me and he said Amber can you bend down and touch your toes? And I started crying because I couldn't anymore. I went from being a really great gymnast, a really great um, cheerleader, to not even being able to bend over and touch my toes. Pretty pathetic and pretty upsetting for a young child, I think, who was so good with that stuff. We took x-rays and we found out that I broke several of my vertebrae in my upper spine. He said to my parents, you need to bring her to get her blood work done. To rule out anything, that's, that's kind of how he put it. I didn't really know what that meant. And my pediatrician thought that I just had arthritis, which is kind of strange for a nine-year-old child. That also comes into play as well. I went, I got my blood taken at Quest Diagnostics. We got me home. At this point, I was wheelchair bound. I was um, brought to my room. I was pretty much carried up the staircase because I can't walk. Put in bed and then we got a phone call from an oncologist at one of the hospitals in my area and she said you need to bring your daughter to this hospital immediately there's something that came up on her test results and we need to see if what showed up is actually what this could be they can't actually tell you anything because it goes against HIPAA and whatnot so I went to the first hospital I refused to get out of the car because I was again in so much pain my ribs hurt so bad when I would put pressure on my legs so we went to the other hospital of which the doctor called us from my dad picked me up put me directly onto a stretcher they brought me upstairs they did a bone marrow slash spinal tap tap uh, aspiration. About an hour later I woke up. My mom told me that I have leukemia, acute lymphocytic leukemia. I didn't know what that meant. One of the, uh, I guess she's like a social worker, came over and tried to explain it. I still didn't understand it. I just knew my blood was sick. That's pretty much what I was told. My blood is sick. My blood organs are sick and diseased. Why it was why I was in so much pain for a while was because it attacks all of your blood forming organs. So you are just in so much pain. If they didn't diagnose me when they did, I would have died in probably a week. Yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. It was pretty hard. Um 
going back to my gym teacher, he, <laughs> when I was in eighth grade, this was like six months after I was done with chemo, he looked at everyone and he looked at me specifically and said, none of you have been through anything traumatizing or hard in your life. Uh, I went off, to say the least, not to him, but to all of the directors of the school. Yeah, so that was, that was fun. Oh, and the day I was diagnosed as well, the pediatrician that thought I just had arthritis, she showed up in my hospital room because once you're diagnosed with acute lymphocytic leukemia, you're pretty much uh, admitted to the hospital for an undetermined amount of time. I was there for pretty much two and a half years, give or take. But yes, yeah, so that pediatrician walked into my hospital room and started feeding me my my uh, my pasta and was like, two claps for Dr. Gaffney, who was the doctor that, you know, said, go and get your blood taken. But yeah, my parents pretty much told her to get out and then other explicits. So that's my, my diagnosis story. If you want to hear me talk more about when I had leukemia, I would love to. I don't get to talk about it much at all because people get really uncomfortable and they don't want to hear about it and I understand that. But if you guys are interested in what I went through, I'm more than capable and willing to tell you uh, some of what I went through. Please uh, like, subscribe, share with your buddies. I put out new videos hopefully every week, every other week. And I hope you stay tuned. I love you. Okay. Bye.